Hello and welcome. So in this video, we're dealing with the solo model. Uh, we're going to be dealing with like a shock uh, and transition dynamics of the model. The specific shock we're going to deal with is a reduction in the capital stock. So capital per worker and the aggregate capital stock is going to just decrease one day. So the typical uh, kind of example of that and the setup of that might be like a war. So like a, a war destroys the capital stock. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to see the effect of that via the uh, solo diagram, and then we're going to look to uh, time series graphs to think about transition dynamics. Cool. So let's get started. Great. Well, here's the solo diagram. Um, you know, once again, we got uh, the green line here, which is our investment line, which is just the savings rate times output per worker. Our red line here is output per worker, the production function. So given some value of capital per worker, how much are, are they producing per worker? Uh, and then the yellow line here is our break-even investment line. So given some amount of capital per worker, this tells you the amount of uh, investment required to keep that capital per worker stock constant one period to the next. Uh, and, you know, our steady state here is going to be K star. So this is the uh, steady state value of uh, capital per worker. Um, yeah. So, yeah, let's get to the scenario. So what the story here is that we have a destruction of capital. So um, let's suppose that we were at the steady state level of capital per worker at K star for a while, uh, and then all of a sudden a war came along that destroyed the capital stock. So we'll say the capital stock was halved. So uh, we're put down over here. So what would we expect to happen? Well, first off, output per worker, right, is a function of capital per worker. So if that shock, that war, that destruction of capital per worker were instantaneous, uh, so K star were to jump instantaneously down here, well, then you would also expect an instantaneous reduction in output worker. So Y star would jump down to its new level. In fact, I'm going to add little subscripts so we know uh, where things were and where things went to. So let's suppose that given that little war, we now have this new uh, capital level here. In fact, it's, I'm going to label just K sub 1 since uh, K star is reserved for steady state values. So at this value of K1, we now have this amount of output per worker, which we're going to label as Y1. Great. So first off, you expect capital per worker to have an instantaneous jump down, and then output per worker to have an instantaneous jump down as well. Um, so yeah, that's pretty straightforward. Uh, and, then, and then what happens, right? Well, at this level of capital per worker, right, you're producing this amount of output, uh, which means we're uh, investing this amount. So the investment rate is uh, just a function of output per, per, per person. You know, investment just is the savings rate times output per person, per person. So this is how much we're investing. And then this yellow line, right, is uh, our break-even investment rate. So the break-even investment rate is defined as if we wanted to keep this amount of capital constant one period to the next, this is the amount of investment required to keep that stock, you know, steady. So this is kind of like a reference point, really. Um, and we see that in the investment in this period is greater than the amount required to keep capital per worker constant. So we know that uh, investment is greater than that. So we know that the uh, capital per worker is going to increase in the next period, right? So the law of motion of capital, or the change in capital, is equal to investment, which is this higher green line, minus our break-even investment, so depreciation in this case. So capital is going to increase by the difference between these two. Uh, we also see that uh, what is consumption? Consumption, remember, is our proxy for welfare. Um, and consumption is the difference between um, output per person and investment per person. So consumption is this to this, right? Uh, where before consumption was the difference between this and this. Given our war, it's between this and this, which is a smaller amount. So consumption was reduced. Okay, so let's look at things in, in terms of time series graphs. And that's what I've done here. So time is on the horizontal axis. In this case, uh, the vertical axes are all labeled. So this is going to be output. This is capital per person. So we were running along here uh, with at the steady state value of capital per worker. And then a war came along. And I halved the capital stock. So we dropped from here down to here. Um, and our capital stock, yeah, it was reduced. Uh, and then after that, remember, investment was greater than the break-even investment amount. Uh, so we see the increase in capital per worker going. Similar story with output per worker, similar story with consumption per worker, and similar story for investment per worker. And lo and behold, 
similar story for aggregate capital levels and aggregate output levels. Cool. Uh, the other thing to note, right, in terms of convergence dynamics, is you see that initially the increases in capital are quite large, but as the capital stock approaches the steady state value, the changes in capital get smaller and smaller and smaller. So why is that? Uh, as I've discussed in a previous video, right? So if we're starting off at this point, you can see the difference between investment and the break-even investment line. That's how much we're increasing capital. It's quite large. But as we get closer and closer to our steady state, the difference between investment and that break-even line are smaller. And so the changes in capital are smaller. So our initial moves towards the steady state are quite large and they get smaller and smaller incrementally until we reach the steady state value after you know many, many periods. And that's it. That's the story. Uh, yeah, hopefully that was helpful. If you found it helpful, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Uh, thanks and have a good day. Bye.